This is part two of my look back of keeping dwarf cuttlefish, sepia bandensis. This video will be a little bit more in depth as far as their care requirements and what goes into keeping them. Here you can see I had many babies hatched. They would all hatch around the same time and pretty much all the eggs were viable. After a day or so, they would begin hunting. Here you can see one of them ink. They would very, very rarely ink. I just startled the one with a turkey baster to get that clip. I did start separating them once they started hunting. This was basically to ensure they were all eating. Uh, it's very hard to keep track of them. Here you can see one in the front is considerably smaller than the one in the back, despite the fact they are within a day of the same age. With them changing color and texture, you could never be sure which one is which. Here's a bunch of short clips of them hunting mice and shrimp. And uh, something I just learned recently is all of their strikes are at the back of the shrimp. This is because they're soft-bodied animals hunting hard-shelled animals, and this ensures they cannot be injured. Sure enough, I went back and looked at all kinds of footage, and they would always grab the shrimp from behind. These little mycid shrimp are really no concern to the cuttlefish, but once they start hunting larger prey, they could certainly do a lot of damage to them. While they may not be successful in every single strike, every strike that I've seen, they actually pull from the back. Once they start eating more than a couple at a time, this is pretty much the trickiest time in their lives of feeding them. Here you can see I've mixed in some PE mysis along with the live mysis. Uh, they're really not big fans of dead food, but the PE mysis looks alive enough. You can see them creeping up to this one. And despite the fact this is a dead shrimp, they are going from behind to ensure they can catch him without getting injured. I think if I were to keep them again, I would just use more mycid shrimp. Uh, the only problem is they get too small and then their next food is a little bit too big. That's really the only advantage of mixing in this frozen food uh, after you've already spent hundreds of dollars feeding them live. What's one extra shipment gonna cost you? It's too bad though you can't get PE mysis live. Uh, they are of course a freshwater shrimp, but the size is much better than these mysid shrimp, which are of course marine. The frozen food is a little bit messy too. Uh, you basically have to keep moving the shrimp around so that they'll go after them. And uh, I guess due to the texture, it breaks down a bit while they're eating it. Here you can see this guy go right over the dead one with no interest whatsoever. I had several little tanks plumbed in with my frag tank, which consisted of one big cuddle nursery. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of the whole setup. Once they did get a little bit bigger, their food was switched over from the mysid shrimp to shore shrimp. While these shore shrimp look exactly like ghost shrimp, they are in fact a marine species that can live in salt water indefinitely. Uh, these are wild caught from Florida. You can keep hundreds in a 10 or 15 gallon tank, and they basically eat anything. So I would feed them pellets, other frozen food, brine shrimp, uh, basically anything. And uh, you could feed them right before feeding them to the cuttlefish to gut load them for even more nutrition. I did experiment feeding freshwater ghost shrimp, which of course I could get locally for pennies, whereas these guys had to be shipped overnight from Florida. And while the cuttlefish would eat them, I found their growth rate was significantly stunted and I suspect it even shortened their lifespan slightly eating the freshwater shrimp. Considering how much you spend uh, feeding them mycid shrimp initially, you're better off to just get a ton of these shore shrimp and feed them for the rest of their lives. They will take frozen food later, but 
again, the trade-off, it's not really worth it. That's messy and time-consuming to feed them. Here you can see a little cuddle taking on a much, much bigger shore shrimp. Again, he's got him from behind so that he can't injure him. And this is a good clip to show that you can't really keep other creatures with the cuttlefish because if it's something it can grab, it will. And if it's too big, they'll be hunting the cuttlefish. The other cuddles are eyeing his prize. And this is why I kept them in smaller groups so that I could feed one shrimp per cuddle so they would all have shrimps instead of fighting each other for one and injuring each other. Even though this shrimp is much bigger than the cuttlefish, they would tend to eat the whole thing, whereas the frozen food, they would let go of it after a while. Here a little later, you can see the cuddles have grown significantly. The shore shrimp are now much more manageable for them. At this stage, I probably could have released them to their main display tank where they would live out their remaining months. I kept them in the brooder's boxes just because it was easier to keep track of them, how much they were eating and how much they were growing. If I were to do it again, I would probably release them a little bit earlier. Shrimp are not too smart. You can see he's just asking to be eaten, but he's already got one in his mouth. This next cuddle here is going to display a lot more color changing and texture changing while he hunts. I'm not sure if this is because he's hiding in the algae or another reason. This is why they were so cool to keep. You never knew what they were going to look like. While they are not always successful with their strikes, you'll see once he does bring him in, he will once again have him from behind. That's about it for this clip. I will release one more of them in their display tank and hopefully you learned something and maybe this will encourage you to keep cuttlefish of your own. Hopefully one day I will try them again or I may try my luck with sepia officinalis which is the bigger common cuttlefish. Thanks for watching and happy reefing.